Hey there, it's Derek here from Pacific Coast Auto in Japan coming in on a Saturday to do some extra work because of all the cars that have been coming in this month, or last month really, that are coming into the lot this month. This one here is a 1991 R32 Skyline GTS T Type M that is all pollen-y on the outside, and I'm sorry about that. I'd love to be able to wash the cars prior to shooting these reports, but it's basically come in, go out to the port, go out for export, and go to your home country. Now this one here is going to go over to USA, to Jacksonville. Has a hundred and just over 150,000 kilometers. Here's the original auction sheet, so 155, 541 at the time of auction. Has a few modifications. Looks like it's been um, driven as a drift car or possibly race car. Actually, you don't really know. These are fairly popular in Japan for both race cars and drift cars. Okay, so we're going to be talking about the condition of the car and compare it to the auction inspection sheet, and then it goes out for export. And yes, look at all of that pollen that is on the roof. We get about two to three weeks of cars that turn out like this, and it's even worse when it rains the day after it comes in, as was, as was what happened with this one. Okay, so we have aftermarket HKS air filter, aftermarket HKS adjustable suspension, Alloy radiator, don't know the brand of that. Maybe Blitz, it looks just like the Blitz ones. Okay, we have a front aftermarket front mount intercooler. Again, don't know the brand, but very well could be Blitz. Aftermarket do-it-yourself style grill there. Kind of an interesting little thing. You see how they folded it in there. Okay. No corrosion on the strut towers, which is nice for any R32. Might have an aftermarket turbo. I'm not sure if that if it is an aftermarket turbo, then uh, the heat shielding still works for it. You look down here, kind of looks original, but they did upgrade the fuel pump, and it is a an original downpipe. The engine is a little bit shaky. I think that it's going to need some proper tune-up, and uh, otherwise it, it runs fine. It is just a little bit shaky. Might have to do with motor mounts, might have to do with not firing as nicely on one cylinder as the other ones. Really don't know until someone that's a mechanic will check that out. Okay, I'm uh, going to lower the hood here. The oil and coolant both looked okay. It's missing the clip for this, so it just kind of sits here. Okay, and uh, it has these hood pin, pretend hood pin pieces. I don't know if those are real but there's no pin underneath. They are real. So if you put your own uh, anchor underneath, then you can use those. Okay, close that up. Quick look at what the car looks like with the hood closed. And I'd say it's a pretty good looking R32. It has been repainted in the original color. And um, you know, a lot of these R32s are in pretty bad condition. If you're looking for an R32, you really need to be trying to get one that's at least mid-price or higher because R32s were such cheap cars for such a long time that a lot of people really didn't take care of them. And especially since they're popular drift cars or race cars, most of the time people who use them on the track, you know, they're, they're spending more money on tires and modifications than they are on keeping it running. And like 10 years ago, you could buy something like this for like $1,500 or $2,000. So because it was easily replaceable, you know, just buy another one was the idea. Not so much the case anymore. Now these are a lot more, like five or in some cases seven times more than they used to be. Because they're running out. This one here, I'm just going to translate this real quick. There are a lot of things to go over here, so bear with me for a sec. It's a 1991 Skyline GTST Type M 2000cc engine, two-wheel drive. That's rear-wheel drive, of course. Auction rate R, interior C, power steering, power windows. The sales points here are original five-speed manual, RB20 DET turbo engine, aftermarket intercooler, aftermarket air filter, aftermarket exhaust, aftermarket radiator, Aftermarket clutch, it seems like a twin plate with lightweight flywheel. HKS adjustable suspension, work 18 inch wheels. They are not in good condition and they have highly stretched tires. And you can scram. That was supposed to be a joke because the name of the car is Scram. It wasn't that funny. 
well, scrum technically, but the A and U in Japanese is interchangeable. So scram, get out of here. Uh, driver and passenger have burrito, burrito seats. Yes, who doesn't want burrito seats? That's just kind of how you pronounce bride in Japanese. So they are not matching bride seats. This one here has a black liner, and this one here has a multicolored liner. I'll come back to the interior in a sec. Okay, and the notes here says aftermarket diff with question mark. Yes, it does seem like a, a clutch pack diff. Today is not a good day for speaking. A clutch pack diff. I should do like uh, what actors do and go la 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 in order to work on my tongue, especially on a Saturday like today. Okay, so here's the report. There are a lot of things here. So again, bear with me. It has been in a front end accident that has been repaired. Interior dirty. Scratch, core support and front support have both been replaced from the accident. Seat fade and cigarette burn, you probably saw that on the passenger side seat. Left and right front inner panel and left and right front side member. Dented, as in damaged from an accident and bent back into shape and modified for the left and right front side members. Okay, dashboard comes up or is deformed. As people know, that's a very common thing on these R32s. I'd say at least 90 to 95% of them have that now. It, uh, let me just show you. It gets damaged because of like uh, heat, bubbles it up. You can see it's coming up here and over here and around those, uh, these which are also broken. It is kind of sad, but you know, if you want an R32, that's the price you pay or you can pay you know a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars for a dashboard that's in good shape plus shipping yikes okay what else we got here um wheels scratched several or various so yeah these wheels really either need to be replaced or used just as track wheels also kind of a weird thing they're all 2019 this front left has way less tread than the rest of them so i wonder if this was like I'm going to hit that drift until I get it. And otherwise I don't know how to drift. And it's only going to wear out one tire because I keep hitting the same drift. I'm not sure. Probably going to need some new tires. But... Okay, what else do we have? Uh, tire house inside area scratched and dented fender arches have been modified. Oddly not on the front, but on the rear they've been heavily modified. You can have a look here. See how they've been pulled right out give more clearance for those tires and tires are a uh what a 250 uh 225 so that's going to be on like a nine inch wide wheel because it's stretched quite a bit admit no 10 inch wide wheel i'd say with that amount of stretch okay the body has various uh da, 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 rivets used during the repair of the body Okay, I did not find those. I did take some undercar pictures. I'm not sure what they're talking about with that, but you will probably find some rivets once you take a closer look at it. Okay, um, floor jack up point dented. That's a skyline thing. If you jack it up at the specified jack up point, they're going to dent. Exterior has been color changed question mark, but it looks like, I don't know, it, like this. Everything in the engine room is black, so probably not black. But maybe this black is not the exact black. Okay. And then the exterior has some uneven paint. Let me show you that. Because on both sides around this area, there's kind of some bad paint. And I'm not sure how well it's going to come out in the video. And it will be noticeable when it's not pollen season. I actually have a funny story. There's a Forester down there. I don't know if you can see. But it looks like a white car. <laughs> because of how dirty it is. I went to the car wash to clean it, which is something I usually don't do because it takes you know a long time to get to the car wash and clean it, but that one is horrible and I can't really show that to anyone. It's way worse than this one is. <laughs> and uh, there was an hour long wait at the car wash because Saturday, I guess. So I uh, I just left it and I'm gonna maybe do it later if there isn't so much of a, a wait. Anyway, underside scratched, dented and rust and rear panel dented and various scratches and dents. And then if you look at the body, there's a windshield rock chip that's nothing to really worry about. A2 on the back bumper, again, not really much to worry about. The A2 here, let me show you that. Right here and here, there are some scratches. That's about as bad as the body gets. There is some paint wave. 
but it's not bad. The car still looks glossy and good. So let's do it once around. You can see it has an aftermarket bumper that's made to look like the Nismo bumper. It is not the Nismo official bumper, which is actually a pretty common bumper and not that valuable. But uh, there are a lot of aftermarket companies that uh, make a copy of it. Here you can see what the grill looks like. It's not perfect. Some people just pull that grill all together. The GTST usually has a hood that comes down for this section here, and the GTR has a grill there. Actually, this bumper, the way that this fits in, like people often have to like cut these or something. It's different between the GTST and the uh, GTR. This one has kind of the GTR look to it. Also includes the GTR wing and some side skirts. GTRs are a few centimeters wider in total though because of blistered fenders, front and rear. This one doesn't have the GTR front fenders on it. Here have a look at this stance or how it sits. Looks pretty good, it rubs a little bit in the front rear I couldn't get to rub and actually with the way that our parking lot is laid out because it's like this this road is on a hill and this parking lot is on a hill you can actually get a good idea if the cars rub while getting out of it because it stresses your diagonal wheels like the front left and the rear right will both go up while the other two go down if that makes sense and you'll you'll notice some rubbing if the car rubs usually Okay, so from the front you can see the front mount intercooler. You can also see these ducts here, they call them like the Nismo ducts. The official ones have plastic inserts that go into the FRP bumper. These ones are molded right in, so to someone who knows what they're looking at, they'll be able to tell it's not a real one. Also this bottom lip is different, see how it comes up a little bit in the center there. Inside of the headlights have cracking on the plastic. It's maybe more noticeable in real life than in this video, but who knows. Has a drop vent for the hood, very cool. I am down with hood vents, completely down. Okay, windshield uh, gasket is pretty good. It is not perfect. There's a little bit of separation here and on the other side too. There's a molding here that cracks very easily on these cars. Actually, you can see some of it here it's been pulled off here. It'll make it a little bit noisier at speed. Also, this area here has been painted. Again, that cracks and shows, like usually it's painted with like a thick black paint that tends to peel up and crack. This has been painted over top of that, but the black paint hasn't been taken off in some areas yet. Okay, this back one is one of the best I've ever seen. These tend to peel away from the corners. This windshield, this back window has possibly been replaced at some point because that looks too new. And this looks like the original one. Actually, this is not the original one. So probably that'll last longer than an original one will. Okay, back spoiler. Looks like either an authentic GTR or a copy. More likely an authentic one that's probably easier to find, but who knows. It does look like a perfect match though. Okay, regular tail lights, aftermarket exhaust. The exhaust is pretty noisy. And it has a nice set of spats at the rear, like these rear aero parts, and side skirts to go along with them. Okay, on to the interior now. That's annoying that it makes that beeping sound. You could hear it when the door was closed. Usually that beeping sound goes away once you close the door. Okay, these door cards are from later model. This is a little bit strange. So this car has had no interior at some point in its life. This is a 1991. These door cards came in in 1992 and they match the rear seats that came in in 1992. And so, kind of a weird little thing there. Uh, but it has the early model dashboard here. Um, notice how this is smooth. It gets a texture from 1992, so this doesn't match the seats. And 
I just turned on the hazards. Okay. All right, so door cards are a little bit different. There's a little bit of uh, sagginess in them. Okay. Otherwise, that looks okay. There's some color fade on this. Folding mirrors works. Power windows both work. Has the original steering wheel, but it looks like it's gone through some sort of a repair to it. You see how it's a little bit different in some areas? These steering wheels are very prone to wear, so this is much better than your average one, but you can still see some damage on it. The driver's seat is saggy in the bottom, so it's not as comfortable as it usually is. Also, the back, see how it's separated here? This whole thing can come out. It's just Velcroed in, but like, it's like stuffy or something, like not as smooth as it once was, so it doesn't fit in there perfectly. Uh, certainly repairable. Or you can just change seats. Okay. We have an aftermarket gauge hood up here. We have a lot of wear on the shift knob, but it is an original one. And then a spin turn knob e-brake handle. Okay. See a little crack at the top of this. I'm trying to do this one hand is it's going to be a little bit shaky. Okay, I believe this is a dealer option or a vehicle optional Sony tape deck and CD player. Okay, okay, cigarette burn for the passenger and weird little piece of foam there. Sometimes these collapse. This one has a little bit. You can kind of feel it. Doesn't look that bad though. All right, and fairly easy to get into the rear seats, pull this up, the seat can fold forward, and there you go to your cokey rear seats. Not zinky. Trunk is good. Most of these don't have trunk liners anymore, from what I've seen, at least the ones that we've been buying. This one has the full carpet, which is in fair condition. Uh, I just pulled this up, that's why it's all like this, and you can see a rear Cusco strut tower brace. And under here, no signs of any rust. That I could see or sitting water so pretty nice and uh, also no rust around here so now that these are this is 31 years old so having no rust is pretty nice so I think pretty good condition R32 I think you can be happy with this one so that's gonna be the end of the video usually these videos are around 12 minutes this one took a little bit longer because of that extensive auction sheet but hope you enjoyed that of course if you have any questions please let me know otherwise thank you so much for watching and have a nice day. Okay, having a look at the wheels and tires here. We have a set of work motion wheels on there. The wheels aren't in very good uh, shape. The ones on this side are scraped a little bit. The ones on the, the, on the other side are scraped a lot. These are DOT tires from 2019. Oddly, the front has less uh, tire tread left than the rear. And so likely this was a drift car and they've switched them back and forth. But there is also wear on the outside of the tire here meaning that uh, this has also been used on the track as a front tire as well. So you got about 20% uh, here in the front. No, probably about 10% here in the front. And then the back one is maybe 30% or so. Tire sizes are the same at 225.40 R18. Okay, has the monoblock style caliper there on the front. Here you can see the fenders have been pulled out. And body filler has been used in order to help build it, uh, it out. And I'm not sure if they rub. There is tire splatter on the inside of the rear fenders. Uh, but that can come from just throwing some tire up. I didn't notice that it was uh, rubbing at all. Uh, while I drove it in and out of the lot. Um, fronts at full lock will rub a little bit. Uh, rears don't rub from what I have seen. But that might be different at uh, like when you're cornering really, uh, really hard.